Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video I want to show you the process of getting a crisp, clear and very sharp looking image. So without much more talking, let's begin. Right away I do want to say the conditions here were pretty good. I do have some nice contrast as well as a pretty clear reflection in the foreground. So obviously those conditions will help a lot creating a sharp image. Now first off I do want to change the profile to Adobe Standard to lessen the contrast just so I have more control over it myself. Now let's go through the basic stuff real quick. The first few things I'm changing don't have anything to do with the sharpness. First off I do want to adjust the temperature just to get some more natural warmer color tones in here. So this looks pretty good. Maybe I could boost the tint a little bit. But that's enough. Now the highlights are a little bit too bright for me so I'm going to drop them. And this way we will also get some more details especially in the sky up there on the left side. Also I want to boost the shadows. And thus we get more detail in the forest in the center. Due to those changes we did lose some contrast. Which might be a problem for making this image look sharp. Because at this point it does have more of a dreamy look, especially in the forest in the center due to the boosted shadows. So let's just add back some contrast by bringing down the blacks. Just a little bit, I don't want to underexpose anything, but this looks good. At the same time we could play around with the general contrast right here. Just spreading the histogram somewhere like this. Alright, let's compare to before. So you can see we mostly adjusted the colors and played around with the contrast a bit. Sharpness didn't change much here, let's work on that now for a moment. For images like this, the texture slider is a really good tool to add sharpness. But of course be careful because this is easily overdone and it will look super unnatural this way. So in most cases I'm only going with very low values just around 5 or 6 maybe, that's already enough. Now you would think adding clarity would also help with the sharpness, but in reality if you are pushing the clarity slider you kind of get this strange muddy look especially in the darkest parts of the image where there is a lot of detail. So I'm personally not a big fan of adding clarity for images like this, at least not overall. So I want to leave the overall clarity at zero for now. However, we can use local adjustments for the top and bottom part and use clarity to make things a little more interesting. So let's do this. Going to the masking panel, you can see I have applied two masks, one for the foreground and one for the sky. First off, I want to boost the contrast between the blue sky and those fluffy white clouds. I could do this by using a color range mask, but in this case I can simply drop the blacks without affecting the clouds, since the clouds are almost pure white. So let's just drop the blacks a little bit to make the blue part darker, just like that. And then I'm going to boost the clarity to give those clouds some more structure. And you can see how the clarity nicely affects the sky up there. Alright, then let's do the same on the foreground. I actually don't want to drop the blacks, I just want to play around with the clarity. And especially for reflections I have the feeling the clarity slider is really really helpful. Still I don't want to overdo it so I'm just going halfway up the clarity slider. Just like that. Let's again compare it to before. And now we can already see some more sharpness going on. But before I can continue with the sharp look I do want to adjust the colors a little bit because right now they do look kind of stretch. So let's go through the color mixer first real quick. I'm starting in the hue tab. Right now I don't like the yellow tones. I do want them to be more orange so I'm going to drop the yellow hue. And you can see how the forest in the center is changing. Looks much much better. Now in the saturation tab I do want to bring up the orange saturation and at the same time I'm going to drop the yellow saturation. Alright, while we're at it we might as well boost the blue tones a little bit. 
Then let's also check the luminance tab. I still think the forest in the center is a little dark and since this is mostly orange color tones in here I can bring up the orange luminance to make the forest a little brighter. Actually let's turn it up all the way. Alright that looks much better. Then I can also make the blue part of the sky darker by bringing down the blue luminance. This way we're adding more contrast and thus also a little more sharpness between the clouds and the blue part of the sky. You can see the color mixer did have a pretty big impact on this image, but it looks so much better. Alright, now let's head into the color grading panel. Here I just want to work on the highlights, giving them a warmer color tone to fit the setting sun in here. So I don't want to overdo the saturation, but this looks good, I guess. And finally, I do want to head into the calibration tab and adjust the blue primary hue by bringing it down. Just like that. And maybe let's boost the saturation here as well. Okay, colors look fine. We do have some nice contrast. Finally, of course, we can sharpen this image in the details tab. Now, I usually increase the sharpening quite a bit and I will always drop the radius all the way down while increasing the detail all the way up. And then I am going to apply masking since we don't need the sharpening over the whole image. For example, the blue part of the sky doesn't need any sharpening and that's where the masking comes in handy. Just hold down the Alt key and click and drag the slider to the right. You can see a white image, that means all the parts of the image will be sharpened. Dragging it to the right, you can see there are black areas appearing and those other areas which don't get sharpened. So I only want the forest and maybe some parts of the clouds to be sharpened. Just like that. All right, and that's it for the raw adjustments. Now we have a pretty crisp, clear looking image right there. And that's pretty much it for the tutorial. Still, I want to finish the post-processing for this shot, so feel free to stay. For now, let's open up this image in Photoshop. First off, of course, I want to get rid of a few things, so I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Right there, there's a sensor spot already, so let's remove that. And on the right side, there are a few tree branches. Actually, I think I'm just using the clone stem tool here. And while we're at it, let's also clean up the water a little bit of all those tiny dots. Okay, nice. I have the feeling I need to brighten up the forest a little more. Therefore, I'm creating a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay. Now I'm going into the TK panel plugin just because I want to select the midtones of the image. Therefore, I'm clicking this button right here. And here I have a preview of the mask I'm going to apply on our new layer. So let's select layer mask. Click the midtones button right there. And now I'm grabbing the brush tool, set the foreground color to white. And also let's drop the brush opacity maybe. And now I'm just painting in a little more brightness on those midtones. Just like that. Now I'm merging those two layers. And finally, I do want to check the Nick Collection plugin. Here we could actually use the polarization effect, which I think will have some impact on the sharpness of the image. So let's see. You can see it will make the blue tones a little darker and thus we are getting some more extra contrast, which results in a sharper looking image. So I do think this looks good. It might be a little over the top, but let's just apply it like that. At the same time, I think I do want to warm up this image some more, so I'm going to add another filter. And this time I'm using the Brilliance Warm filter right there. Now let's just bring up the warmth a little bit. Well, it's maybe a bit too much. I think this looks good. So let's apply it like this. All right, perfect. And here we have the finished image. So I hope this video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.